I shall on to the believers. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, big salute to all the brothers out here pushing this word in the most true sincerity and diligence. All right, beginning with our elders and apostles, double honors to you, mighty men, and all the believers out there in the houses. I pray that the Lord uh, uh, bless you and get you through these times to come. I right, shall on while Baraki and peace and blessings. And uh, this is just something quick, and I was in the spirit to go into, I had uh, thought about, you know, this this uh, old bug out that uh, I used to watch when I, when I first came into truth, but later on, you know, the spirit revealed him to be just a bug out, and, um, you know, spirit made me just go check out his page and see what he'd been doing, and, um, you know, uh, I was thinking, I was just looking, I was like, I was just reading the comments, and I'm like, okay, you know, looking at his followers, you know, I'm like, this, 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 this guy, um, you know, for someone that's not, you know, you know, in the spirit of Yahweh Shemi Shah, they would think this this got to be a man of the Lord, but this guy here, you know, he's he's not in the clear, man. Like he has, uh, he still hasn't repented, and he's committed a great offense. All right, and that great offense is uh, offending uh, the little ones, okay, of the Lord. And, um, and the scripture came to me, you know, the parable in uh, Matthew the 18th chapter where it talks about the the, the greatest in the kingdom. And I just thought about that, and I had wanted to go into that, all right, to, you know, just to remind you to be uh, careful of who you offend, okay? Because that 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 dude there said some offensive shit, you know what I'm saying? He called the uh, various brothers included, which it, which is a you have elders in in the Great Millstone Boston camp that he was you know speaking of. He called them. Uh, I don't want to say the word because you can get flagged, but he called them the the F word that that, that rhymes with rabbits. Okay, <laughs> he called them that and amongst other things. And um, yeah, so I thought about this parable. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it out. This is Matthew 18 and one. You know, just again as a reminder to, to be careful what you say and how you uh, conduct yourself out here, and uh, be be mindful of what you say. Right? You don't want to offend uh, the servants of the Lord. All right, this is uh, Matthew 18 and 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Yahweh saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahweh called a little child unto him and set, set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, that he were drowned into the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh! Exclamation point. Wherefore, if thy hand... Matter of fact, let's stop there. And I'm um, start at the top again. I want to get the, the NLT version. About that time, the disciples came to Yahweh and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Yahweh called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children. All right, and little children represent humility. You will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because you have to. Well, we're, we're all the Israelites are gonna experience the kingdom of heaven, but uh, in order to to make it there on this go, on this go, all right, when the Lord comes back, you know, beginning now, you have to become humble. You have to become like a child. You have to be uh, a, a sponge for righteousness. You know, a righteous sponge. You have to be able to um, be corrected, be rebuked, be taught, be instructed, right, by men that 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 are even younger than you. You have elders in this truth that's 29 years old. You know what I'm saying? And they got men in their camp in their 30s or, you know, 10 years their senior. So you have to become as a little child. Uh, verse 5, And anyone who welcomes a little child like this, all right, anyone who welcomes someone humble, okay, like this on my behalf is welcoming me. So by receiving uh, these, these humble men out here in this faith, you're receiving the Lord. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned 
in the depths of the sea. Let's look up a millstone. So if you're a fan of believer of the Lord, it's better for you to tie one of these around your neck. See, perfect. And, and, and the Lord is telling you it'd be better for, for this to happen to you if if, if you if you offend one of the little ones of the Lord, okay, one of His believers, right, one of His the, the humble children that serve Yah by Shem El Shai. And I might use this as a thumbnail. Yeah, that's that's bad right there. Okay, but if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of sea. What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin. Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? All right, let's keep reading. And uh, I was reading this too. I like these, this little thing here it says so if your hand or foot causes you to sin cut it off and throw it away it's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both hands with both your hands and feet and if your eye causes you to sin gouge it out and throw it away it's better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell so whatever things that are you know hindering you from uh, or or tempting you to um you know to go the path opposite of this truth you need to cut it out you need to be you need to t remove it okay you need to you need to get rid of it man because temptation is out here and uh temptation is tough you know what i'm saying you you might think well if i put i can put myself in this temp this this uh t tempting situation but i can you know i ain't gonna fold you know that Hey, it's you, you, you gambling, you rolling the dice because, um, you know, many fall to temptations, uh, you know, many fall to temptation. That's why the Lord's prayer, let's get, let's get that real quick. Matthew six. All right, verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, lead us not into temptation. Why? Because you don't want to be led into temptation. You don't want to be tempted because what is Satan uh, known as? He's known as the tempter. Matthew 4 and 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of man, command that these stones be made bread. You know, okay? And so the tempter is Satan. You don't want to, <laughs> you know, Satan is, hey, it's badass, man. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, okay? You don't want to be tempting the Lord. You don't want to be going toe to toe with Satan, man, if you can avoid it, okay? And it's a scripture in Sirach that I'm thinking of, too. I can't remember where it is. Um, let me just type in temptation and see if anything come come up in Sirach. Well, let's get this. Sirach 3 and 1, which is Ecclesiasticus in the, in the Apocrypha. There shall no evil happen upon him that feareth the Lord but in temptation even again he would deliver him because deliverance from temptation comes from the Lord All right, let's get it first Corinthians the 10th chapter All right, because you get it put in these uh, these temptations if the Lord ain't with you okay you'll be taken by him All right, first Corinthians 10 and 13 there have no temptation taking you but such as is coming to man but the most high is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it all right so yahweh shemel shah makes the way for you to you know get through these temptations all right so let's get back to matthew the 18th chapter and verse 10 and the KJV says, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Say that again. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. 
For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So the, the little ones have angels. Okay, it says they're angels, right? Let's go to Psalms, the 34th chapter. Verse 7, it says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Okay, so the little ones, okay, they have angels around them, man. And they're beholding everything that's going on here. So going back to, you know, this dude and, and many like him who have offended the prophets, you know, that has come before the throne, man. And, and judgment is going to come on these guys, man. And this dude ain't repenting. He ain't made no videos apologizing. You know, here it is. He was calling, you know, the, 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 the men of great millstone calling them calling them rabbits and you know all these other things and saying all this wickedness and shit you know he, he hadn't repented you know and here it is he bugged out doing two hour sit downs in his living room just crazy the manna test here it is he you know mushrooms thinking getting high on on this psychedelic drug called mushrooms was the manna you know that was that was spoken of in the book of exodus the pms hyenas can't stay see PMS, calling members of GMS, PMS, got uh, Elder Apostle of Hall and his woman there. So this dude has offended the little ones of the Lord and, and the angels that didn't camp around these men, okay? They 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 giving the report up, man. And and people people like that are gonna have to answer for this. Again, let's get to NLT, Matthew 18 and 10. It says, Be beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. This is Lord giving you giving you sound advice this is wisdom this is things you should take heed to beware that and i'm speaking to myself too beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones for i tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly father you see so hey man take heed not to despise these little ones take heed not to offend these little ones no matter what these men look like how they appear Okay, how low, how, you know, how, you know what I'm saying, how poor they may appear to be, the Lord is dealing with, with, with that. You know, he's dealing with, with the, the low, the filth of this world. He's not dealing with, you know, the, 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 you know, the best that this world has to offer. Okay, Harvard educated, multiple degrees, you know, uh, uh, all these multiple investments, a homeowner. Okay, been on his job 15, 20 years, whatever. You know, the Lord ain't dealing with that. The Lord is dealing with, 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 the, with the poor and the needy. Let's get that, because King David spoke of that a lot. For I am poor. Let's see. Let's Psalms 40 and 17, but I am poor and needy. This is King David. And, and King David was a man after the Most High's heart. Okay, as, as it's written, right? The Most High loved King David. You know, his name David, Dawada means beloved. Okay, but I am poor and needy. So King David is referring to himself as poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. See, the Lord thinks upon the poor and needy. And thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my power. Psalm 75, but I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O power. Thou art my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Make no tarrying. See, he shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break pieces, break in pieces the oppressor. Psalm 72 and, and 13, he shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. Let's see what, what poor and needy is in the uh, blue letter. Psalm 72. 72 and 13. Poor is dull. Needy is Abba Wa Abba Yawan. Abba Yawan. Low. Poor. Weak. Weak. One who is low, you see. And, and the Israelite man, is, the Israelite man especially is in a lower state, man. Here it is. We the rulers of this earth, 
I the the, the righteous the, the people that this earth was created for, and we're in the lowest estate, man. We we in the lowest of the low, man. The poor and the needy. Needy is a a buy a buy your wine, which means. Needy, chiefly poor, needy person. We need the Lord. We need salvation. <laughs> Subject to oppression and abuse, needing help, deliverance from trouble, especially as delivered by the Most High. General reference to lowest class, and the lowest class in the United States are the, the uh, are the uh, African American, so called, so called African American, so called Hispanics, and so called Native Americans. Man, why you think foreigners coming from all over the earth? And they way ahead of us, man. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, Saeed just came here two weeks ago, and he already setting up shop in your neighborhood. All right? We the lowest class, man. So we are those, uh, look, destitute, beggar. And when, when you go on these interstates, all right, when you get off these interstates, uh, what, what do you see? You see Jake's on the corner with these signs asking for change. All right? We're in a destitute begging position, man. Poor and the, the poor and the needy. All right, and, and in this position, we're supposed to be in a in a humble, childlike spirit. You know what I'm saying? And and, and those are who the Lord are dealing with. I'm gonna go ahead and get the, my last one, since I mentioned it. Filth. Let's see filth. Let's see what comes up there. First Corinthians. 4 and 13. Let's get that. 1 Corinthians 4 13. We'll start at 10. 1 Corinthians 4 and 10. Alright, we are fools for Yahweh Shah's sake, but but ye are wise in Yahweh Shah, yo. Because for Yahweh Shah, we go out here on these on these corners, okay, and these highways and hedges, and and make ourselves look crazy, man. We out here, you know, as they would say, with these dresses on, you know, signs out here speaking, nobody's listening, you know, up here yelling while we're reading the book, you know, it, it looks like it looks foolish, it looks crazy. In the NLT, it says our dedication, but that's our dedication though. Our dedication to Yahweh Shah makes us look like fools. But you claim to be so wise in Yahweh Shah. We are white, we are weak, but you are so powerful. You are honored, but we are ridiculed. And we're despising this word. It says you are honorable, but we are despised. But ye are strong. We are weak, ye are strong. Because the people of this world, you know, they look at us as weak. You know, we're weak. I know for a long time, when when uh Israelites first started teaching, you know, in these cities. People used to always scoff and say, get a job, get a job, you bum. Used to, you know, act like brothers ain't work. You know, they are honored, but we are despised. Even until this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. You know, back then, see, Christians were under persecution. You had to be on the move. Uh, you had the whole, you know, you had to come together in, in other believers' homes. Yeah. Um, and labor working with our own hands being reviled we bless being persecuted we suffer it see being persecuted and the nlt it says we work warily with our own hands to earn our living we bless those who curse us we are patient and this, this goes to, to you bless you know the, your, your fellow israelite man to hell with the other nations you don't have to bless a heathen okay we bless those who curse us we are patient with those who abuse us Cause, cause, uh, even with Yahweh Shai, when he was, when he was, uh, going through his, uh, when he was going through his, his old situation, getting put on the cross and stuff, he said, "Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do." So he blessed them to curse him, you know. Thirteen, being defamed, we we entreat, we are made as the. This is the point, and we are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. And LT it says, we appeal gently when evil things are said about us, yet we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash right up to the present moment. And let's look up that word filth. Strong's G, 4027. Perikatharma. Perikatharma. 
Let's get this comes from a compound root word. Refuse uh, the most abject and despicable men about on account of damn, it took me all the way back. Hold on. First Corinthians 4 and 13, the filth. So this is it right here. Strong's G 2508. Cathyro. Cathyro. Cathyro to cleanse of filth and purity. Metaphor from guilt to it. So not really telling you nothing there, but the NLT says it plain. Alright, we being the fame we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world, man. Alright, we're treated like the world's garbage. Alright, because we because we don't have the look, we don't have the mindset of the world. So, hey man, this is what the Lord is dealing with, man. Because uh friendship of the world is enmity with the most high. So if you're not a friend of this world, you are gonna be deemed as uh as, as filth. Let's get that friendship with the world is enmity with the most high. James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and ye adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with the most high. Let's see what that says in the NLT. And I've been on my NLT a lot lately. Uh, I just bought an NLT hard copy of a Bible just to get more understanding and edification on the translations. This is James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers, don't you realize that friendship... Oh, Salakia, like don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of the Most High? I say it again. If you want to be a oh, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy with the Most High because Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is against this world, man. All right, and hey, the plagues are coming. Here it is. Most of the country is in is in ice. Um, it's cold as hell. Record temperatures in Dallas and Texas. Uh, millions without power and it's freezing you know you know and this is a uh, part of those great miseries coming upon the world for their great pride all right second edges 8 and 50 and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and end that man because i can just keep going but i'm gonna go ahead and end there i didn't want to go off into nothing else i just wanted to make the point at uh saint matthew 18 chapter all right the greatest in the kingdom are the little ones all right be careful not to offend those little ones i want to give all praises on and glory to yahweh shim yahweh shai shalom